Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name is Ross, and as always told, out of voice of radio. And as some of you may know, especially if you follow me on Twitter or over at the Wassy, I recently had a baby. I say, oh, I didn't do much of the work. It was my wife and I. My wife did do most of the work, if we're really honest here. But the point is, I called him Archie, who of course was the leader of Team Aqua. Not the reason I named him Archie, but still, a handy little bonus. And I've had a bunch of messages from people going, all right, Wossy, who's this spirit Pokemon? And I thought, well, I could tell you in a tweet. But why would I not make a video about the top five Kyogre cards we've ever had? Because that's Baby Archie's spirit Pokemon. Now, quick caveat to begin, Kyogre sucks, man. Like, in the Pokemon trading card game, Kyogre isn't good. Um, I've been playing really heavily since Diamond and Pearl, and it's never been good. And I've spoken to some friends, dug through a lot of old articles, done a whole bunch of research, and it's hard to find any real mention of Kyogre ever doing well. So, um, yeah, we'll do the best we can here with what we've got. So in at number five, Kyogre EX, and let's go a, a double entry here for the one from Hidden Legends and the Nintendo promo, which was in the EX collector's tins. And I kind of like them because they are wonderfully spiteful. I'm not arguing that they're good, but they are wonderfully spiteful and that makes me happy. The Kyogre EX from Hidden Legends, as long as Kyogre EX is your active Pokemon, each player's Groudon EX and Rayquaza EX cannot attack. Cool! It just literally stops Groudon and Rayquaza EX attacking. That amuses me greatly. The Nintendo promo has a Pokebody Frenzy. As long as your opponent has Groudon, Groudon EX, Rayquaza, or Rayquaza EX in play, Kyogre EX attacks do 40 more damage to the defending Pokemon. It is the most wonderfully spiteful pair of Pokemon pretty much since we saw that heat more, which literally does more damage to Durant. Oh, it makes me happy. Now, the attacks are nothing too special. The one from Hidden Legends, two energy, 20 damage to one of your opponent's Pokemon. Two water and a colorless, 50 damage. You may show your hand to your opponent and do 50 plus 10 more for each energy in your hand. The Nintendo promo, water and a colorless, 30 damage. You may attach a basic from your hand to one of your Pokemon. Two water and a colorless, 40 damage. 10 more to each of your opponent's bench Pokemon. Not good cards, but you've got to put them on the list for the pure spite of it all. In at number four, the Kyogre from Legends Awakened. And the reason this makes a list is when I was playing in the Diamond and Pearl format, I did see a few decks running around playing this, some of which did... All right at the time. Again, not arguing it's a phenomenal card, but in the context of Kyogre, it's not bad. Zero energy. Choose up to two basic water energy cards from your hand and attach them to one of your Pokemon. And this is what I really like about Kyogre. The fact that you can just attach two energy from your hand, but you don't actually need to attach any energy to do so. Because obviously if you're attaching two energy from your hand, but you've got to attach an energy to Kyogre to attach, it gets kind of annoying because you're only really gaining one energy the first time. So I, I like this very much indeed. As for the main attack here, two water, one colorless energy, 60 damage. Discard two energy and then do 20 damage to each of your opponent's bench Pokemon. It's fine for spreading a bit of damage around. It's quite expensive, even at the time, free energy was quite expensive. I mean, when you consider that the Diamond and Pearl format was really dominated by cards like Machamp, single energy attacker, Gyarados, zero energy attacker. And then, of course, we had the odd ones here or there, like, ooh, I don't know, Gengar, that came in with a whopping two energy attack or single energy attack and you kind of see where we're going here it's um it's not a great time to be a treble energy attacker the first attack helped and in a water energy hungry deck it was fine but it wasn't anything special but it's still the fourth best kyogre i think we've ever had 
In at number three, a very similar Pokemon, the Kyogre from Cosmic Eclipse. That's right. It's just come out, and by my reckoning, it's the third best Kyogre we've ever had. Now, it's kind of similar to the one we just looked at. One colorless energy attached to water energy from your discard pile to one of your Pokemon. Now, this is actually really, really handy because it's much easier generally to get energy in the discard than it is to stash them in your hand. You can whack them in the discard and then just carry on with your day rather than having to keep them in your hand for the attack. And what it does is it just accelerates energy. Now, this has literally just come out and it's massively helped by the fact that we currently do have the Quagsire that came out in Dragon Majesty that's got the washout ability allowing you to move your water energy from one of your bench Pokemon to your active. And we've got some really nice water Pokemon around at the moment like Keldeo GX, like Blastoise and Piplup for instance. And it's quite nice to know that we have got some options here for just getting a bit of extra energy onto the field. As for the attack, two water, two colorless, 130 discard and energy is horrendously expensive. It is nice for taking out non-GXs at the moment, but to be clear, horrendously expensive. So, um, be a little bit careful, would you? In at number two, probably my favourite one ever, we are talking Kyogre and Groudon Legend. This was one of the really, really cool cards that was actually in two bits. And you had to put both bits in your hand at the same time, and then you could play it down as one Pokemon. Although it was a pair of Pokemon, so it still gave up two prizes. And this was a very awkward deck to actually make work, but when you got it working, it was rather lovely indeed. Now, it was a very energy-hungry deck, but it was 100% worth it when you could get it rolling. Two water, two colorless energy, discard the top five cards from your opponent's deck, and do 30 damage times the number of energy cards you discarded, to each of your opponent's bench Pokemon. So if you discard two cards from their deck, you do 60 damage to each of their bench Pokemon. And of course, you're still discarding five cards from the top of their deck. So what you have here is a combination of wonderful spreading and trying to deck your opponent out by milling their cards. The most common way this was played was with Feraligator, the Prime, which was another one of these cards. We've had many of them over the years that have just let you attach as many water energy from your hand to your Pokemon as you like. There was another attack for two fighting, two colorless energy that did, well, you discarded the top five cards from your deck and then did 100 damage for each energy card that you discarded, which was, um, awkward, shall we say. But at least you could use something like Research Record to try and rearrange the top cards of your deck. Research Record was an old card. You looked at the top four cards of your deck, put as many of them back on the top of your deck as you like in any order, and the remaining cards on the bottom in any order. So basically you kept any energy there and put the rest away. And then hopefully you'd hit kind of two energy, and that would be enough to KO basically anything. So that was nice, but it was much harder to get the fighting energy on there. We did have the Regirock from Legends Awakened, which was quite nice. And then you could always use something like Lucian's Assignment to move it over. Or indeed, Shaman. But it was significantly more awkward. Not saying it wasn't possible. I'm saying it was kind of awkward. But in at number one, the best Kyogre I think we've ever had was Kyogre EX. Big E, Big X. And yes, I am including the Primal when I talk about that. Now, we are talking kind of awkward things here because it wasn't really just one card. We actually had two different Kyogre EXs. Now, the better of the two was the one that came around in Dark Explorers. This was generally the one that people tended to play. And what it did for a couple of energy was 30 damage and you switched to the bench. But far better than that was two water, one colorless energy, 50 damage to two of your opponent's Pokemon. Now, this was good for a number of reasons. At the time, Vile Plume was an extremely popular deck, which sought to just stop you doing anything, basically. 
But, of course, they were playing Oddish. And Oddish don't have much HP, ladies and gentlemen. Oddish comes in at 40 HP. So it was a way of just getting rid of two of them at the same time. Ah, the Ancient Origins one had 50 HP, but you would still get a KO on it, so it really didn't matter. And this was actually used in a bunch of decks like Kling Clang, for instance, whereby you would just move all of your energy around, and then you would just have basically an option of using whatever Pokemon you wanted, and this would be your Pokemon of choice. You'd use all kinds of stuff like Rainbow Energy to make sure that you could pay the cost. So that was really quite fun. And it really was Jewel Splash that was the better of them. The other Kyogre EX was fantastically underwhelming. 2 energy, 30 damage plus sleep. 4 energy, 140. Return 2 water energy from this Pokemon to your hand. No. No, 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 no. We don't like that very much at all. Now, it did actually evolve into a primal Kyogre, which was also an awful lot of fun. 4 energy, 150 damage, and you move 2 energy from this Pokemon to one of your benched, so that if it gets KO'd you don't lose all the energy, just a couple, and then did 30 damage to each of your opponent's benched EX Pokemon. So this was really nice, although it was a very different thing, right? Generally speaking, this was played for Primal Kyogre, whereas Kyogre EX was teched into a bunch of other decks, just for Jewel Splash. Now, one very important point to note here is that there were two different versions of Primal Kyogre. The one that came around in Primal Clash had the ancient trait Alpha Growth that basically said you could attach two energy cards when you attach from your hand, not using an attack ability or trainer just for your turn. Whereas the reprint had Theta Max, which when you evolved into it, you healed all damage. No, no, no. You wanted the one that attached extra energy. And I really do think that Kyogre EX is the pinnacle we've seen of Kyogre in the Pokemon trading card game. It's not, it's not been the best Pokemon ever, but it's Archie Spirit Pokemon, so I had to do it, and I feel good that we did. But hey, maybe you disagree with me. Maybe you've got good memories of other Kyogre. Honestly, I just want to hear your opinion, so let me know in the comment section. Go nuts, be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wassy, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash PTCG Radio. If you want to support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and all that good stuff, head on over to patreon.com slash PTCG Radio, where you can do exactly that. And please do make sure you're checking out youtube.com slash Plays, where we talk about a whole bunch of games that don't even have any Pokemon in. But by far the most important thing as always... Look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching PTCG Radio.